Do you know something guys, something really kind of concerns me about this Summer Wells case because look, we're heading over now to what, nearly a year. It's going to be, before we know it, we're going to blink and we're going to be at a year. And I think when we take into consideration everything we've learned and everything we know, especially with these recent arrests and we know there was around 30 people arrested for trafficking not long after summer got gone even yesterday we saw or was it the day before yesterday depending on when i upload this there was more arrests there was another eight people arrested due to trafficking we have a potential party situation as well where there would have been a load of people at 110 Ben Hill Road and yet no one wants to talk about it so we're really I think we're kind of 50 50 down the middle and that is that we're either looking at an accident or something potentially happening on the property or we could be looking at a familial trafficking situation that could have potentially went wrong or perhaps familial trafficking that opened up the doors to something else and that went wrong but look trafficking is happening and it's happening everywhere. I've touched on numerous times how this isn't a small enterprise. This is a $150 billion plus machine and make no bones about it. It's everywhere and everybody is at risk. I've seen stories and these are true stories about people who have very quickly found themselves in trafficking situations and Look, by the skin of their teeth, they've managed to escape. Heard a story not so long ago, I think I touched on it in a previous video, about a young girl who had befriended, and this was a school-age girl, by the way, she was around 15 years old, and she was hanging around with 19, 20-year-olds. You know, like the old frat boys at the frat houses. And um, she remembers going to a party, and she woke up, all of a sudden, woke up, and she was in a completely different state. Thankfully, she woke up and nobody else was about. I'm guessing that perhaps she was drugged and the effects of that drug had worn off quicker than what had been anticipated. And this allowed her to get out of that house. But she was being trafficked. This was a girl who had been sold by people that she considered friends to people out of state. And this was just a happy story of somebody who had managed to escape what could have potentially happened. And what I mean by happy story, I mean a happy ending. She, she escaped, whereas so many other people, they are not so lucky. Now, was Summer Wells a child that was enveloped in a scenario caused by her parents and her friends, um, her parents' friends, and this is just what spilled out onto her? Because something happened, and look, I can't help but think, all of these adults around this area are all lying. They're all lying. We know they are. They've all got stories to hide. They're all telling half-truths. They're all elaborating on other things. They're all kind of moving the gravy train as much as they can in order to benefit from the situation themselves, but not giving too much away to how can I say, make themselves culpable or complicit. But let's not make no bones about it. We know that there was things going around there and these are secrets in amongst this entire circle of people. And I think it's one of them where something happened and I go down, I'm bringing you down with me. So even though they want to be seen to be telling enough to get the drama around them and get something out of it, and perhaps... They can turn around and say, well, I'm going to earn something out of it. I'm going to get something out of it, or I will say something. Maybe that's what's going on in the background. But look, trafficking, back to it. I want to show you these images. And we've touched on the glitchy shoes and the fact that these shoes aren't promoting missing children. They are enabling people who wear these shoes to hide children. I proved in a short video that I'd done yesterday that the person behind them, which is... Joel Brown, which I imagine he has got connections with other people. This is not a lone solitary person. This is someone who is working as part of a bigger machine. And look, I've approached this guy directly 
under the guise of somebody else who had a missing child and requested whether he could help me, knowing well what I did about him trying to promote missing children. And he blocked me as swiftly as I could tell you this story. I was gone, bang, like that. So don't tell me that his intentions are good. His intentions are disingenuous and they are nefarious. But he is also watching this case. We know that. I proved yet again that he is watching it. There was some drama between two channels, one of them being Benny Keys. And very swiftly after that happened, there was a design of shoes very swiftly uploaded on there that was it was taking the piss out of benny do you know what i mean it was it was aiming at him i touched on the fact whether it could be tim mullen i do find this guy incredibly nefarious i have known that he has already threatened another youtuber again i've touched on that he threatened on him once they touched on something else that was found to be connected with him and that person felt the need to remove that content um, because he, he he scared them and they don't want to kind of shake the tree. But I don't care. I don't care. I might upload it myself and do a whole video on it. In fact, I might do a 45-minute long video on it and have you dancing. I can do a little animation of you dancing in the background. That's how much I care. But look, these images, these are youtube sites and this glitch what we talk about well when we mention glitch this is a way that these traffickers find a page they find a site like youtube and they find a way or a glitch in the searching algorithm in order to promote content to people who would be interested in seeing it like this channel here is all about young boys half dressed in you know playing with water like play fights and things like that and just in very precarious situations you can't comment on it there is no comments and you can see that there is a sinister undertone to it and this is just one of many many channels the same but what it manages to do it manages to get round the the algorithm so it's not removed it doesn't look like anything sinister it doesn't get flagged up for anything because of how it's marketed and there's no comments um i can't see the back end of it but i would say that it's potentially set for made for kids too so it leaps over a few other loopholes but look make no bones about it this this page is directed at evil people and when you look at some of these videos, it is reminiscent of the video we saw with Summer Wells, with the barrel, with the for sale. If you've not seen that, I have videos on the channel with that. But this is a video where someone was very clearly being asked to dance around a barrel, and the barrel happened to have for sale on it. Now, I know these aren't the cleverest people in the world. Is cleverest a word? I don't know. It is now. You know I'm allowed to do that. We do that here. But look, having a child <laughs> dancing around a barrel and um, it's got for sale written on it and it looks like these kind of videos on channels like this, something don't sit right. Something doesn't sit right at all. And the fact that there are so many liars around here and, n and people are hiding some very specific things, it just leads you to believe that there is more going on. And these out of sight, out of mind places like Rogersville and these back roads of Ben Hill Road, these are the prime locations. These are the areas where this is rife because people don't go. They don't go there. They don't see it. So it can be hidden in plain sight. But the more I look at it, the more I see what's happening, the more I see what's happening around this and the underfunded and the even law enforcement around here. We know that they're bent as a two-bob bit. We've seen footage, there was a video that came out which was of a guy who was he was stopped on the DUI and the police involved. They basically beat this guy half to death. They were stamping on him, they were kicking him, they left him in a mess. And he's now suing them for just over, just under $4 million, I believe. And um, Ronnie Lawson comes up front and centre and he's basically saying, look... Pfft, 
it is what it is. We did what we needed to do, and he ain't got a leg to stand on. And the confidence and arrogance of this guy is scary. But we know that Ronnie Lawson has connections in other fields, such as judges. Um, but that's for another day. But this is about trafficking, and this is... I believe that Summer and her family were involved in trafficking. I do. Can't help it. Can't help but think it. We know drugs were involved, and these things come hand in hand. They're in the back end of nowhere. Trafficking's right around there. It's, on, it's like wildfire. And a little girl gets up and vanishes. Just gone. Tell me what it was. She didn't wander off. The parents don't seem to give two monkeys and their arrogance and confidence again, like we see with Lawson. They're quite confident that nothing's going to get found, nothing's going to get seen. And it's absolutely sickening. Absolutely sickening. But, like I say, normal people, people who do know about what keeps them safe. You know, we're talking about teenagers. If they can disappear in a heartbeat and go into the trafficking world, then what chances has a five-year-old little girl surrounded by criminals and scumbags, what chances has she got? Let me know down below what you think and how scary is this situation becoming. So not a very good one. Not a good one at all. Catch you in the next one, guys.